Hello everyone, welcome to Arrow's Diary. Tonight we'll be talking about faith. What is faith really and how can we define faith? Why do we need to have faith and what 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 about faith? Okay, you're welcome to the show. This is Arrow's Diary. I'm glad to have you here on the show. I'm glad that you're a part of this journey. If you're just watching the channel for the first time, please subscribe and um, click on the notification button so that you can always get updates when the new video is posted we post every week to be precise every monday after all the editing and everything and we, we always hope to make sure that you have the best you know the best of information at your fingertips okay so tonight on the show i'm going to be quickly looking at what is faith and um the scripture i'm going to be looking at today is Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, and it says, Faith, hmm, faith is the evidence of things or for the substance of things not seen. Okay, so if you read Hebrews 11, you will see different accounts of faith in the lives of different people that the Bible um, refers to as um, faith figures or people that acted in faith. The truth is that faith cannot be in isolation. It has to, there has to be works that is done alongside the word the, the faith okay so we can also say that faith is believing trusting having confidence in someone or something fortunately tonight we're talking about faith in god the truth is that a lot of people have faith in different things some have faith in money some have faith in their wisdom some have faith in the things they have been able to acquire their material possessions some actually have faith in other people but i would want us to look at faith in god how can we have faith how can we say we have faith in god the first question i would like to look at is how can we live by faith and if you were a part of the arrows diary live show we had a guest and he, he said you can only live by faith when you walk in love when you believe that god loves you and he wants the best for you you'll be able to have faith in him because you will know that he will not allow something bad to happen to you and you will hold him to his words everything he ever said you'll be able to say no god said this and it is so i believe he loves me i believe he's always he's always got my back and because i love him and he loves me so much that he could give his son for my sake, because the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That means God does not want us to perish. The Bible also says that I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. This is deep because it's not only looking at you prospering as a person, it's talking about your soul prospering and you in your body being in good health so god wants you to be in good health so if you have faith in god you'll be able to believe his word if you believe that god loves you you'll be able to believe every word that he has said about you and you'll be able to hold him to his words and to live trusting him totally regardless of whatever situation you find yourself in and this brings me to a very important point Every time you go through something, a trying phase, a, a problem, a difficulty, it is important for you to know that these things are supposed to help you to grow stronger in your faith, to help you become stronger, become a better person, because really, God loves you and he wants the best for you. Okay, so how can we then overcome fear by faith? Well, the guest on the show as well did a very um good did very good justice to this particular topic he said that for us to be able to overcome fear with faith we must believe in the one in whom we have faith in and because this fear comes yes it will come because we are human and we are we we, we we are human beings on this earth and we see a lot of things but because we trust in the one that loved us the one that gave himself for us we'll be able to say yes he has said that nothing no evil will come near me he has said that he will protect me he has said this he has said that and then we'll be able to love him and to trust in him so we cannot really live in faith if we don't love god if we don't love the one that is giving us the faith because the truth is that Faith is not something you happen on. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is by the word of God that faith 
comes alive in you. Male Karaya. It is by the hearing of the word of God. And I said something. I said, you don't just read the word of God. You also speak it to yourself so that it can come into your spirit. Because faith only comes by hearing. And it is only by the hearing of the word of God. So when you read the word of God to yourself, you tell yourself, oh, this is what the Bible says. It says, by his stripes, I am healed. So you receive your healing. It says, I will not be barren. So you receive your children. It says, I will have every good thing. I will prosper and my soul will prosper. So you receive your prosperity. So you need to read the word of God, not just as a novel, but read it and believe in the word of God that you're reading. And then you will have faith. Not only have faith as the gift of God, but you have faith work for you because you're putting action into it. Okay, another thing is, how do we differentiate between faith and hope? And this is something that gets a lot of people confused, but it is very clear. And, you know, we were able to do justice to that on the show. You can watch the full video length on YouTube, or, or on Facebook rather, and you would hear everything that was discussed. But to bring it to a brief, the thing is that hope is something you believe would happen in the future. You, you hope it happens. You wish you, 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 you expect it to happen, but you're not sure it's going to happen. But faith says it is so. Faith says it is now. It doesn't just say it will happen. Faith says it is. it has happened. It is now. It would happen now. It has happened now. Like, you done it already. For example, in Isaiah 5, in Isaiah 53, sorry, verse 5, the Bible says, and I, I would like to quote, the Bible says that, that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes ye are healed, by his stripes we were healed. So it is not something that is going to happen, it's something that has happened already, we are healed already. In fact, we were healed, you know, 2,000 years years plus ago when christ gave his life for us on the cross and isaiah foretold it by his stress he are healed so when we read it we're reading the past tense by his stress we were healed so that means that we're not just struggling to get healed we already have that healing in our bodies we already have the healing power of god at work in us and we have the healing available to us but it has to, for us to you know say to ourselves by his stripes by whose stripes I am healed by what stripes I have been healed because I have been healed sickness doesn't have a place in my body so we need to confess the word of God that we hear that we read that we hear other people say we need to confess it because that is the way to build our faith so faith in a lot of dimensions in a lot of ways is tied to our confessions okay and then we also looked at how can we overcome fear with faith? And I, I think I already explained that, that you can overcome fear with faith when you walk in love. When you believe that God loves you, he wants you well. And I've given us scriptures that says, you know, that he wants us to prosper and be in good health. And he says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. You know, God has good thoughts towards us. And when we believe in these good thoughts that God has towards us, we're able to grow. We are able to increase. We are able to believe the things that he has said, that he has good thoughts towards us. And we are able to see that everything happening in our life works together for our good. He knows everything. He created you anyways. So he has a master plan for your life. It's just like when you buy a car. No one knows that car like the manufacturer. No one can understand the car like the person that put it together. And it's just the same way. Nobody can know you as much as God who made you. He said before you were brought forth, before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I'd called you by name. That was what God told Jeremiah. And it's the same thing for every one of us. You know, Jesus Christ explained that. Even before one air falls from your head, God knows about it. So he cares so much about us. And we have to realize that he loves us so much for us to be able to believe in him and to trust in him. So, remember I said that faith is trust confidence in someone or something and we are talking about faith in god so it is confidence trust total trust even when it's against logic total trust in god yes and at this point i want you to actually if you are on instagram go to rt and rt and i rt and i yes rt w n i sorry rt w n i for you to read testimonies there are a lot of testimonies on that page and i'm sure when you follow at that hashtag only for women though you will be able to see a lot of testimony that people have shared 
you could just even type miracles you know on google and see miracles that that has happened that people have shared and you could read the bible to see how god brought I I I israel out of egypt by his mighty hand and you know how he healed in the bible how jesus christ went about doing good and healing the sick and when you read these things when you hear these things you'll be able to grow in your faith okay another thing i would like us to look at is this question that says does taking drugs when i am ill show that i do not have faith yes a lot of people actually think that when they take drugs when they are not feeling too well it means that they don't have faith but i beg to disagree this now because the truth is that every invention every knowledge for witty inventions comes from god god gave the doctors the, the wisdom to create that drug that you're about to use and the truth is that if you don't have faith even when you swallow the pill that it will work for you it would work that's why we have what is called the placebo effect where people take things that they, um, they've been told are drugs to cure different things and it actually works for those that believe it will work because the, it's their belief in taking that thing that makes it work so it is your faith in taking the drug that makes it work and it's the same he gave an illustration our, our guest on the show when he said that it's just like saying i believe that god will take me to america and then you refuse you know to go get on the plane the truth is that you will stay in whatever country you are for a very long time until you decide to actually believe in the invention of, of an aircraft or, or, or a ship to get to your destination or even a car and it's the same thing when we sit on a chair we actually believe that that chair is strong enough to carry our weight so the truth is that faith at different levels is a substance like he said that can be measured so faith is something that applies to you at different levels some people will have faith and then they will pray and then they will get ill from an headache and then some people will have faith and then they will take a pill and that pill will work because they believe that that pill will help them to cure whatever it is that they are actually um having an issue with or they are struggling with at that particular time in and at that particular season so our faith taking drugs doesn't mean that you don't have faith and we also want i also want to examine faith and money the truth is that when you have faith when you have faith in god having money becomes a plus because you realize that that money you have is a gift from god and you're not trusting in the money but you're trusting in god who is the giver of that money which is a good gift but when you are trusting in money you're running after money you want to make money at all expense you might end up losing your life the truth is that jesus christ said that those that will love their life will lose it and those that will lose their life to him that would you know lose themselves totally in god would actually gain their life you know as a reward so we need to learn to trust in god to believe in him and to put our total trust in him okay so on the show tonight i would also want to mention a few things that i mentioned on the show on this on this recording that faith is you know being sure about something knowing this thing is real even when you don't see it even when you cannot logically see it but you know it is real because god has told you that this thing is it is it's just like the air we breathe we cannot see it you know physically but we feel it but we breathe it in anyways so our faith in god is not something that we might be able to quantify by to by seeing it but we know we have this faith we believe it and it will become our reality another thing i would like to say is that we cannot say we have faith if we don't believe in the giver of faith we cannot please god until we have faith bible says it explicitly that without faith it is impossible to please god so when you pray for something when you ask god for something and you believe that he has done that thing how then do you receive it by continuing to thank him for that thing you asked him for a husband continue to thank him that he has blessed you because he his, his ears are not deaf his, his hands is not short that he cannot save us when we continue when you continue to thank him you believe once you believe that's the important step once you have that faith that you have received what you've asked for you have the faith to ask and then when you ask you believe that you have received that thing and then you continue to thank him for it you will see it become your reality because you begin to put your heart consistently to it also i would like to mention that our faith must be demonstrated like i said when we say we have faith that god has done something for us we must demonstrate it by acting in line with what we are saying and faith without works without our actions is actually dead our faith is built 
when we go through challenges and situations in life that are that looks like a, a hop ill situation but when you go through those things and you come out strong it's just like the gold the raw gold when it's put with you take it through fire it comes out refined and it comes out better than it was before it went into the fire it shines brighter that is just the way faith when you go through trials makes you shine it makes you stronger it builds you up and it helps you to be a better person generally lastly i would like to say that faith in god comes with accepting all things about god you need to accept that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you need to believe in god and for me i'm a christian my faith in god makes me understand that he's a is a three persons in one god he's a father he's the son and he's the holy spirit and i believe that he exists in this in, in in trinity is three persons in one god and because i believe in this thing because i have this faith i'm able to trust god i'm able to believe that he exists i'm not just trusting i'm not just believing in god as god the father i'm also believing in god as god the son and god as the holy spirit that lives in us and that helps us to overcome everything um, before i end this video there is something that is important that i must mention that if you're yet to know god the lover of my soul, the one that loves me so much and is the reason why I'm alive today. I've been through situations in my life where if not for the, the love of God, I wouldn't be here. So when I talk about the love of God, I know I almost died when, you know, I was pregnant and I had a complication in that pregnancy. And I did not know that it was a complicated pregnancy until I, you know, I was rushed into the hospital and so many hospitals rejected me. But, you know, God showed me his love. He showed me his light and he brought me back to life. And it was just the grace of God that, you know, sustained me to the very end. It was because God loves me so much that I am alive. It's because, because he loves me so much that I'm here talking to you, that I'm anchoring this you know, program and making this video recording and posting it on YouTube. It's because he loved me so much that he spared my life and he brought me out of that situation. And I know that the God that did mine, that brought me out of that pit, that rescued me from the claws of death, because if I had been a minute, you know, later to get into the hospital than I did, I'll probably be, be no longer in existence, but because God loves me so much. And that same God also loves you so much that he paid the ultimate sacrifice of laying down his life to save you and to save me. And because he loves me so much, he spared my life for me to be here talking to you tonight. If you're yet to meet this God, I'm glad to introduce him to, to you. I would want you to accept Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. And I would like you to say this prayer with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and personal Savior. I lay down the burdens in my heart at your feet. And I take on your yoke that is easy and your burden that is light. I give you my life. I give you my love, my hope, my all. And I take on the promises that you have for me. And I trust you totally with my life. Lord Jesus, take away every pain. Forgive my sins. And write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you just said that prayer, please send me a direct message. You can send an email to cultureexpose at gmail.com. That is C-U-L-T-U-R-E-E-X-P-O-S-E at gmail.com. I'll be glad to hear from you. If you like this broadcast and this video has actually blessed you, please, please and please drop a comment, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Also feel free to share this link with your friends and families so that everyone who watches can be blessed. Till we meet again next week, I remain yours truly, Arewa. God loves you. I love you. Stay blessed and stay lifted. Bye-bye.